In this series of videos, I want to show you how to create your own invoicing system. I'll start off by describing how to create the invoice itself in terms of formatting and structure. Also how to keep a customer database and how to keep a record of invoices. And you'll see here that wherever we have an invoice that's overdue, it appears in red. But if we say it's paid, then the red background disappears. So it's a good way of tracking your invoices. You can also see over here when the invoice was emailed and you've got a link to the invoices as well, so you can view them. Now in other videos, I will also go through these macros that I've created. You've got a macro that will save the invoice as an Excel file, a macro that will save it as a PDF file, a macro that will automatically email the invoice to the customer. A macro that will add the invoice to the record of invoices. And the last macro here will clear the current invoice so that you can start a brand new invoice. And it will also automatically generate the next invoice number for you. If you want to learn how to create this invoice from beginning to end, including all the macros run by these buttons, then follow the link in the description of this video to the playlist that contains all the videos in this series. Okay, so now we've designed our invoice. What we want to do is to add the invoice details to the record of invoices. Now the record of invoice is gonna record the invoice number, company, invoice amount, date issued and date due. So that is just the date plus terms in days. And then if the invoice is overdue, so if the date due is in the past, this part of the invoice row becomes red. But if I select that it's paid, we'll get rid of that red background. Over here, we're gonna leave space for the path to the invoice as saved as a PDF, and then eventually the invoice saved as Excel file. So you've got those two options depending on how it's been saved. And also, we're eventually gonna create a macro that will display when the invoice was actually emailed. Now we're gonna automate that record of invoices with this add to record button. So we'll just create our invoice, click on the add to record button, and it will automatically appear in this table. So this is where we left off last time, as I said, with the invoice designed, and we've already got a customer sheet but we're going to create a new sheet called record of invoices. And I'm going to put in my column headings. Okay, so I've got my column headings. Now we're going to apply some conditional formatting to columns A through to F. And we want the background of these rows to be red if the invoice is overdue. We have to ask three questions, basically. First question is, does the row contain an invoice number? So we don't want to format blank rows with a red background color. Second question is, is the date due in the past? And the third question is, is the invoice not yet paid? So we're gonna have either blank or yes in this column here. So if it doesn't contain yes, then we want a red background to the row. Now the first job is, is to select all the cells that we want to apply the conditional formatting to. And I'm gonna go down to row 1000. So I click into A2, I go up to the name box, I type colon, and it'll be F1000, then Control Shift Enter. That'll select down to that row. Then on the home tab of my ribbon, I'm gonna to go to conditional formatting, new rule, and I'm going to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And as I've explained, three things need to be true. Now it says format values where this formula is true. So with three rules, I've got to return one true result. And to do that, I can use the AND function. And I'm gonna say, is A2 not equal to an empty text string? Now at the moment, A2 is locked on both column and row, but I actually only want it locked on column. 
And that's because when this formula is copied down to the rows underneath row two, I want it to look into A3, not A2. Need to lock the A because the condition always relates to column A. Comma. The next rule is, is the date due in the past? So I'm going to say is E2, which I'm going to fix on column, but not on row, less than today's date. I can use the today function to return today's date, comma. And then the last rule is, is F2, also fixed on column, not equal to yes. And yes is a text string, so it goes in quotation marks. Close the bracket. And then I'm going to format with a red background. Click on OK and click on OK. The next step is to have a drop down list in this column, the paid column, that just allows us to select yes if the invoice is being paid. So I'm going to select from this cell down to F1000. Control Shift Enter. And to add the drop down list, I'm going to go to Data. In the data tools group, I'll go to data validation, allow a list, and I just want yes as my one option. Click on OK. Now the next step is to automate the process of transferring the current invoice details over to the record of invoices. I don't want to have to do this manually. I just want to click on a button and it to all be automated for me. Now we can do this with a VBA macro. And because we're going to be using macros, we need to make sure our invoice is now saved as a macro enabled workbook. So to achieve that, you go to File, Save As, and you need to make sure that your file type isn't Excel workbook, but it's a macro enabled workbook. Now, when you're dealing with macros, it's a good idea to have the developer tab on your ribbon, and that doesn't appear by default. So to get it to appear, just right click on one of the other tabs on your ribbon and go to customize the ribbon and then tick this option here developer and then your developer tab will appear on your ribbon over here you've got a button for the visual basic editor now that should bring up the visual basic editor and the first thing you want to do is to create a module so if you go up to insert up here and go to module and in your module, you can store all the macros you're eventually going to need for this invoice system. Now we're going to call this macro record of invoice. So the first line of code is sub record of invoice, open bracket, close bracket, and that'll create an end sub line for you. We'll just create some space between those two lines. Now we've got to declare a variable for every piece of information that we want to capture from the invoice. So we'll start with the invoice number. I'll say dim invoice number as long. Then I want to store the customer name. So I'll say dim customer name as string. Then I need to capture or store the invoice amount. So I'll call that AMT and I'll store that as currency. Then I need to store the date of issue. And I'll store that as date. And I also need to store the term, 30 days, 60 days or 90 days. And I'll store that as byte. And then I'm going to say what I'm going to store in those variables. So to make this clear, I'm just going to close down this Project Explorer and move this over here so you can see which cells we're referring to. So the next line of code is going to tell Excel what to store in this invoice number variable. It's essentially going to be the value in cell C3. Remember these cells are merged, so the actual value is in C3. You can see that if I select this cell, it says C3 up there. Invoice number equals range C3. And I've got to do the same for the other variables. Customer name equals range B10. 
amount equals range. Well, amount is right at the bottom of the invoice. That's in I-41. Date of issue is in range C5. And term is in range C6. The next thing I need to think about is where in the record of invoices I'm going to place this record. Now in the first place that's going to be in row two, but if there was already in something in row two, then I'd want to insert the next record in row three, and then four, five, six, etc. So I need some way of ascertaining which row is the next available row. So to do this, I'm going to declare another variable called next record or next rec. And I'll store that as range. And then because range is an object, I need to set it. I'm going to say set next rec equals. Now I'm going to reopen the Project Explorer. And I want you to see that record of invoices is sheet three. Now sheet three, the code name for the sheet is the most reliable way of referring to that sheet. It can't be changed by the user and it can't be changed by changing the order of the sheets. So that's how I'm going to refer to this sheet. So next rec equals sheet three dot range. What I need to do is go right to the bottom of the sheet and then back up, select the last cell in range A and then use the equivalent of control up arrow key and that will get me to the next available row. I'll show you what I mean. If I had a, a value here and here. Now I'm going to go down to the bottom of the sheet to row 1,048,576 and then if I do control up arrow key you can see it takes me to the first value that it finds in this column. Then I'd want to move down one row and I know that's the next available row in my spreadsheet. I'll just get rid of those. So first of all, I need to refer to that last cell in column A, which is A, 1,048,576. And the equivalent of control up arrow key in VBA is dot end Excel up. And then I need to move down one cell. So I'm going to use offset to move down one row. Row offset one, column offset zero. Now in that cell in column A, I want to put the invoice number. So I'm going to say next rec equals invoice number. So remember that's the string that's stored in this variable here. In the next column, I want to store the company name. So I'd say next rec, dot offset, no rows but one column. That would move me over to column B and I'd say that should contain the customer name. So now I can begin to copy these lines of code and I'll say next column across that'd be column C needs to contain the amount. Next column Column D needs to contain the date of issue. The next column is going to be date due, and that's the calculation. Is date of issue plus the term. Okay, let's see if this macro works. So I'd be on the invoice template sheet. And let's play the macro. And if I go to my record of invoices, you can see that those details are now stored. Now, let's change this invoice date here to the 1st of the 1st, 2022. So the date of the recording is the 10th of February, 2022. 
So this invoice is going to be overdue once I add it to the record of invoices. And I want to see if it comes up with a red background. And you can see it does. Until I go here and say yes, the invoice is paid. The final step is to create our button on the template to run the macro that we've just created. So on the developer tab, go to insert and under form controls, click on the button button, draw your button, and then choose the macro you want to run from this button, record of invoice. To change this text, you can just click into the button. And I'm just gonna write add to record. If you click outside the button, and then right click on it, format control, you can change the alignment to left aligned. You can do things like change the margin. So I'm going to change the left margin to 0.5. Click on OK. And then if you wanted to add a little button, you could go to Insert Illustrations Icons. If I type Add. Insert. I'll change that to 0.85 width and height. Can drag that onto the button and then you want to group it so right click on the button then hold down shift and click on the little icon shape and format group and group and now if i right click on the button i can drag it around as one object so let's see if this button works let's put in an invoice number of 1000 Date, today's date. I keep these details the same. Let's say change the customer. Add to record. If I go over to record of invoices, you can see it's added that record. Now these other columns we shall be utilizing in the other videos in this series. They are going to require other macros to fill in this information, a link to the PDF, a link to the Excel file, and also a date and timestamp for when the invoice was sent. Okay, that's all I'm gonna cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next video.